Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about Lightroom and more specifically how do you set up the smoothest possible workflow uh, so that you can get your images from the camera into the computer and into Lightroom as smoothly and easily as possible and so you, that you can edit your photos from maybe four or five hundred into like five or ten photos that are really great and how do you set up a workflow so that you can do this without frustration and as quickly as possible I tend to uh, import a lot of photos into my computer every day so I have spent a lot of time setting up a workflow that I really like and that is very efficient for me so I want to share that with you today so maybe you can get some inspiration or maybe some ideas for how to improve your workflow. So let's go! Number one, one button wireless import. Imagine if you could just press one button on your camera, as I'm doing here right now, and then all the photos on your SD card will be wirelessly transmitted to your computer, imported into Lightroom and previews will be made all uh, automatically and without your further involvement after pressing that button on the camera. This is the workflow I have set up and it is so nice. When I get in from a photo walk or a photo shoot I just uh, press this button to send the files to my computer and then I go grab a cup of coffee or whatever and when I get back I'm ready to edit in Lightroom and all the previews are made and everything is just prepared. It was a little bit tricky setting this up uh, because Sony cameras for some reason they have to do the Wi-Fi import into a subfolder with uh, today's date. And Lightroom uh, on the other hand just as inflexible <laughs> refuses to accept photos in subfolders for its auto import feature. So I had to write a bash script uh, which I'm linking in the description in case you want to look at it. Uh, that moves the files from the subfolder into <laughs> Lightroom's main uh, auto import folder. And once I set this up and then enabled auto import in Lightroom, it works really really nicely. Obviously it is still faster to take out the SD card, put it into your computer or card reader and import that way. Uh, but that is more work and uh, it is so much more convenient to just do the Wi-Fi auto import and let it work everything out itself, so I only extract the SD card when I'm in a real hurry. Number 2. Leverage the modules. When I was a beginner in Lightroom I tended to go straight into the develop module. Uh, you see at the top here there, are, there is library, develop, map and so on. Uh, I tended to go directly into develop, but the library module is actually really really good uh, when you're are supposed to select what photos you want to keep and which ones you want to throw away. That module is like made for that uh, and it is much more convenient to do it in that module. You have the tools that you can adjust exposure with or you have even have the auto button to uh, automatically bring up um, dark images and bring down light images and so on so that you can easily assess whether a picture is worth keeping or not. So I tend to use the X button to react the photos I don't like in the library module before I move on to the uh, develop module. Number three, multiple passes. When you import hundreds or even thousands of photos into your library and often you have like 20 or 30 variants of the same photo and you have to pick like the right one in your editing process, you tend to feel very overwhelmed. And I found that the best way to counter this feeling of overwhelming is to uh, go over all the photos in multiple passes. Uh, in the first pass I'm quite sloppy, I just delete the ones that obviously don't have a chance to be keepers in the end. So I just use the X button a lot and re react most of the images in the first pass. And then uh, when I've deleted them I go through the second pass where I try to compare more uh, between the different variants of the same photo and I try to delete the ones that are not as good as the best variant. And if you use this method you can quite quickly throw away 90% of your photos in the first pass 
and once you've thrown away all the obviously bad photos it is so much easier uh, when you just have like 10% of the total amount of photos left uh, to go on a second pass and remove the bad ones in that pass and then in the end you just have like very few photos left from which you pick the real winners and uh, when you do it like this in several passes the editing process becomes much easier and you don't feel that frustration and overwhelming that you could feel otherwise. Number 4. Hell yeah or no? This is actually a quote from I think Derek Sivers who is an entrepreneur slash writer slash many things and uh, I think he uses this quote for life in general and I think it is a really good philosophy uh, but it also applies to editing photos at least for me uh, when I try to decide whether I should keep a photo or delete it I just use this question uh, do I feel hell yeah about this photo do I feel like it is a really great photo that brings me joy and that yeah like it's uh, really really good uh, if I don't feel that way, I just delete it immediately. You're not supposed to have a lot of strong feelings about keeping all of your photos, it would just lead you to a lot of problems. Not only in terms of disk space, which uh, will fill up very very quickly with all of your raw files, also, when you go look for photos later, if you only keep like the real keepers, the hell yeah photos, you just have a few usually from each day and it's much easier to find the photo you're after and you don't have to later, when you're trying to find the right photo, decide between like 10 or 20 variants of the same photo because you were too uh, wimpy to <laughs> delete the 19 bad ones and keep the best one. Uh, I mean, there is so much good that comes from deleting the bad photos immediately, uh, so I can heavily recommend it. Your library will be much much more manageable uh, and also your disk will not hurt as much. Number 5. Leverage smart previews. A smart preview is simply a smaller version of the original raw file and it enables you to have all your raw files on a disk that isn't even connected to your computer, such as the pictures you're seeing right now, they are on a disk that I have not connected to my computer at the moment, but I can still work on the photos, I can look at them, I can even export them. They are not quite in full size, but they are big enough for most use cases. And I'm saving a lot of disk space by having them on my external drive. And periodically I just move uh, photos over to my external drive to free up space, and then I just simply create smart previews and I can continue working with my photos as if they were on my laptop, even though they are not. Smart previews uh, is such a nice feature and I recommend you to try it to save some disk space. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, please like it if you liked it, <laughs> please subscribe if you aren't already and if you want to see more photography tips going forward. See you in a few days again, over and out.